Good morning, guys. What's going on? Welcome back to the Micro Futures Trader channel, my Casper community. Hopefully, you guys are hanging in there. Welcome back. Guys, you are not going to believe the upper price targets we have for Casper down the road. We're going to be talking about them towards the end of the video. So hang in there and you will be pleasantly surprised. We have a couple things to talk about on this Casper chart this morning, the 23rd of February. It is just about 10 of 5 in the morning on the East Coast, getting a little bit of a run up here in the markets, a little bit of a turnaround, which is nice. Looks like we have Bitcoin up just over a half of percent, Casper up 3.15% percent getting a little bounce for flare the stock market futures are also in the green a little bit nice little bounce it's been a pretty red week a couple things here in the short term for the casper chart it's been a it's been longer than i would like to do a casper video but as you can see there has not been much going on we have been basically sideways to choppy for pretty much most of this year. We had a little bit of volatility show up in the end of January. And then we had some volatility show up in the beginning of February and kind of been thrashing around most of the year. We've been ping ponging basically between our 415 level getting as low as, let's see, 313, and then we made it as high as 466, and everywhere in between that. So I have a, I have a chart pattern here on the screen that has some concern to it. I don't know if I would call it a head and shoulders, it has some kind of a topping look to it. I drew a basically a neckline. A neckline would be valid for a head and shoulders. Basically look at it as a support line. So this white line here connecting some major support areas, some major lows along this pattern here and then taking a projection down to the downside for if we get a break out of this. So basically what you'll do is you'll measure the depth. You'll take the low of the neckline and then you'll take the high of the head. You'll take that depth and then you'll from the entry, which would be over here on the right hand side down and whatever that is, that would be in theory, the target if this pattern broke to the downside. So I took roughly the left-hand side, which is just about 17 days. The left shoulder, is, it's give or take 17 days. It's not perfect. Like I said, it's not a perfect pattern. And then, so in theory, that would take us out to the, I believe it's the 26th of February. So just a couple more days, and that would basically be equal to the left-hand side to the right-hand side. So if this pattern breaks, this gives us a target. Oddly enough, guys, it's way down here, right, right below our level at 284. This level has been on the chart for probably many, many months, if not longer, 284. So that is a, it's a pretty vicious move to the downside if that took, took place. Might not take place, but if we just simply look at this pattern, make it equal distance on the left side and then the right side. Take the depth from the neckline up to the high in the head, bring it down, gives us basically a target right around 0 0.0284. So bring us this right back down to this zone, this zone right in here. Which, if that took place and we looked back, it would look like very normal trading action. Also, if we even stopped up in here at 313, 310, that would also be 
just a very normal area to stop because there should be a lot of support there. This whole area was resistance at 313, 310. So a pullback stopping in and around that zone would also be very normal chart action. Really depends on what the rest of the market does. If the rest of the market rallies, then we're probably heading higher. If it doesn't, then the odds of this breaking increase quite a bit. So from a percentage basis, from basically the entry there, from the neckline, if that got broken, that would roughly be a 27, 28, 29% move to the downside. Basically a one cent move, which doesn't sound like a lot, but on a cheap crypto like this, a one plus cent move, 27 or so percent. So that's something to keep on your radar. I'm not saying cash was going to crash from here, just being realistic, looking at the chart and saying, okay, if this thing does break out here and does a full retrace, where is it probably going to go? And it's either going to stop somewhere around 313, 310, depending on how hard the market sells off, or if it does a full move, 284, so a 27 to 30% move to the downside based on just that little pattern alone. Hopefully it doesn't do that and it finds support and can break out past its current resistance, which is 415 and 435. That's these two levels right here. You can see if I put a, I'll, I'll just circle this, a circle around these, all these candle wicks, where did they find resistance at? They found resistance at our level, which is 415. We did try to break out and ultimately got pushed back down between our 435 and 466. So it's looking a little toppy right now within this very rough head and shoulders. And you can see the potential move to the downside. We're looking at the Dow Jones last night. Not that the Dow Jones has a head and shoulders pattern, but the Dow Jones has a topping pattern. And it, it looks like the right hand side of that wants to cliff dive to the downside. Hopefully it doesn't happen. If not, if not, it if it does happen, we'll get cheaper prices for Casper holders as well as stock market holders. So if I zoom out here, keeping that in mind, guys, keeping this in mind, guys, we have this basically this initial run up here. And then the question is, does it break lower or is it a fake out? And do we actually blast off to the upside? Well, we can look back actually on the Casper chart and something similar took place not that long ago, actually. I can actually probably make this all on one screen so we can compare both. There we go. So back here in, let's see, the summer of 2022 dating to September 2022. So not too long ago, we had a pretty vicious sell-off, and then we had a rally take place. This kind of wedged higher here, had that initial breakout. Resistance came in right at 336 and 3, excuse me, 366 and 363, which is right here. And then ultimately what played out is a retrace all the way down to the bottom. So not a perfect pattern like we have now. We wouldn't really be able to draw a trend line. We could, but it wouldn't connect. Actually, if we did that real quick for you guys, let's see here, horizontal line, trend line. So we could do something like this. It wouldn't be perfect. And you could see how it played out. It actually did break right here. Get my chart cleaned up right here. And then found resistance and then continued lower, eventually finding support. So you can see it's not a perfect mirror image of that pattern. But if it played out and we actually traded back down all the way to the lower end of the range, which would be 284, I mean, maybe it goes down to 262. It would look very similar to this whole scenario over here from June into September of 
last last year. So just keep that in mind, guys. There is this has taken place before on the Casper chart, and we just walked you through this whole scenario right here, and it could take place again. So saying that, let's take a look to the upside. The upside, we have some very, very high targets. And these are all based on the Casper trading history. So I'm not just pulling these out of thin air. We have a... Let's see, where is our first target? Guys, we have a target for Casper dating all the way back to the early days here that would give us a 7 to a $5 Casper price. $7 to $5. We're trading at $0.03 cents right now. The return on that would be unbelievable. A percentage basis. So we're trading, looks like we're trading just under $0.04 cents right now. So we'll take basically that so percentage basis up to our $5 range is a, looks like a 12,000% return and then a 17,000% return up to $7. Is it possible? Of course it is. We've traded up there before. We've traded up in the five, the seven, and ultimately much higher. Market, of course, in a solid uptrend, we wouldn't expect to see this in a down market. We also have prices everywhere in between, 97 cents, 35 cents, 30, 12, and so on. Which is just like if we get back to, real quick, and then we'll go back up to the higher prices. If we get back to all of these lines in here, where the price finds resistance, finds support, the same thing well above the market. So this 12 cent level right here, same thing. They all act as the same way. The higher we go, it doesn't really matter. So let's zoom back out. Let's get those higher targets back on our screen. So 7 to $5. We also have some targets way up here, guys. 99.22 is our highest target we have or Casper, basically a $100 Casper cryptocurrency price. Way up here in yellow, takes us to all-time highs. So this candle wick here, which is our all-time high so far for this chart, is a high of $66.44, $66.44, and the low was $0.03, cents, so... I was not personally around for this day. I was not watching Casper at this time. According to the comments in some of the videos, the earlier Casper videos I was putting out, people were around for that and saw that. Also below that, we have a $71.10 Casper price. So a $100 Casper is very possible and that actually might be a conservative price that actually might be very cheap some people would argue much higher than that so let's take out the percentage and see roughly where that would be it's going to be a lot here so if i take looks like 177,000 to 70 dollars and then 248 thousand percent return up there roughly to a 99 dollar casper 248 thousand percent hopefully that takes place one day and we can experience that i watched a very cool video last night on a guy who was buying bitcoin at one dollar and even even better than buying it at one dollar he was making YouTube videos telling people to buy Bitcoin at $1. He actually had people that 
were following him that did that. It was just a cool story that there's ridiculous opportunities out there in the market. And a lot of the buys you take won't work out or they won't work out to that that magnitude. The key is never give up. Keep learning. Be smart about what you're doing. You know, Don't go all in and lose it all. Although people do that, that's totally up to you. Nice to have enough money for another trade or a, another buy left over if one or two or 10 or 100 projects don't work out as planned. Just quick recap, guys. Appreciate you hanging in here, checking out this video. Potential big move to the downside, 27 to 30% move we could see for Casper if this breaks and does a full retrace, which would take us down to the 284.0284 level. Similar pattern took place over here in 2022 from June to September. So we'll see if the markets tumble, then there's a good chance Casper is not going to go straight up. It's probably going to head to the downside. Keeping a more bullish, positive thought for the long-term holder. Guys, we have some crazy, crazy price targets up here. 97 cents, 35.30. Also keeping in mind the high single digits, the 5 to $7 range. And then I'm sure some of you will be around if this comes. And then we have the 70 to $99 Casper targets way up there. These are all based on Casper's previous trading history, too. So I am not just pulling these out of a black hat. You guys have a great rest of your day. It's the 23rd of February. We're getting a little move here in the markets this morning. Let's see if it is sustainable throughout at least one day. Can we get one solid day back in the green? So far, we've had many days, at least referring to the futures markets where we have been red, 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 and red. I think it's been four or five days we've been heading to the downside for the stock market futures down 150 plus points in a couple days. Got some news coming out tomorrow. So we'll be here no matter what, no matter if the markets are up or if the markets are down. There's a couple of my scenarios played out for Casper. Catch you guys in the next video. Check out our most recent two videos ago, actually. It was a simple video on creating a stock market risk model where you plug in a few different criteria, shows you your risk. And uh, it's nice to see that ahead of time, ahead of a trade or ahead of an investment. All right, guys, take care.